Number 13 from the specimen paper then, here we go, graphs of a rational function. You've got this fraction here, just five marks. First two marks, identify the vertical asymptotes, but also justify your answer. Well, you'll get the vertical asymptotes, I'll just put it down like this first of all, you'll get the vertical asymptotes when the denominator equals zero. So it's just a case of factorising that then. That must be x, x. Multiply to give 8 with a difference of 2. That'll be 2 and 4. So it must be minus the 4 plus the 2. So you're getting two answers from this. x is negative 2. x is 4. That's the first mark for getting x equals 4 or x equals negative 2. But then the reason, well the reason is when x is either of those values, the denominator will be 0. Would you state that, state that or simply say that means that y tends to infinity when x is either of those values. y tends to infinity and it could be plus or minus because it could be one or other on either side of it as x tends to negative 2 and it also does that to x tends to 4. Is that a sufficient reason? I'll put that because it's divided by 0. So that's the reason. It heads off to, it's undefined, it heads to infinity as x goes towards either of those numbers. The second mark. Now part B, for three marks, there are two statements. First one, it does not cross or touch the x-axis. It's the same as saying it does not intersect the x-axis. And the second one, the line y equals zero is an asymptote. Well, true or false? Well, the first one, you can check that quite quickly. Try and find the value of x for which that happens. So, cross the x-axis means you're looking for y equals zero. And if y equals 0, it's sufficient for the numerator of that fraction to equal 0, which in fact gives you an answer. That gives the answer x is equal to 3 quarters. Which means it does cross the x-axis. Which means 1 is false. Of course, I'm saying cross because I've got a single root. That's worth a mark. Second one, the line y equals zero is an asymptote. Now, this means what does this graph tend towards? What does it look like when x gets very big? Well, when x gets very big, the dominant term on top will be the 4x and the dominant term on the bottom will be the x squared. They'll overpower the other terms. The top one is a degree less than the bottom one, so it's a proper fraction. And that fraction will tend to zero. But how do you show that? Well, you could just rewrite it this way. This term there I've got is x squared. Divide everything by x squared. So I've got 4 over x, minus 3 over x squared, over 1, minus 2 over x, minus 8 over x squared. Because you're trying to show the behaviour as x tends to plus or minus infinity. Now you can't put infinity into a calculation, but as x tends to infinity, what you know then is that one over x tends to zero. So if you can create one over x's by manipulating the top and bottom, of course you can do what you like to the top and the bottom, multiplying and dividing wise. If you can get one over x's, you know then as x tends to infinity, they tend to zero. So that means y would tend to, that will go to 0, that will go to 0, or tend to 0. That stays at 1, minus 0, minus 0, which means y tends to 0 over 1, so y equals 0 is an asymptote. I should put it to the front, as x tends to infinity. Now, that technique of dividing it out is worth one mark. And then the final result, the statement, oh, I didn't put the statement down. Two is true. For the last mark.
Now going back to part A, part A did say identify the vertical asymptote, but justify your answer, which isn't a sort of usual one. So that's different from justify the nature of them, as in how do they approach infinity around these two values. If that were the case, but it wasn't here, if that were the case, the best way to do that is with a table of signs. So this nature can be found if you can express this in a factorised form, where those factors are linear factors, as they are in this case here. So that was what? That was x plus 2, x minus 4. A wee slopey minus there. It's even worse, I should have left the slopey minus. And then make up a table of what the critical values of these are when the parts become zero. So at negative two, you've got an asymptote. At four, you've got an asymptote. But also at three quarters, which was between them, it actually was zero. And then find the value of this in between all of those values. But you don't need to do any calculations because they're all going to come from the signs of these factors, these three factors. If they're all positive, the answer's positive. If they're all negative, being three of them, the answer's negative and so on. And the linear factors, that one is zero here. It's a positive x. So before it, pick any value of x before three quarters and it'll be negative. And then it'll turn positive afterwards. The line 4x minus 3 increases at 0 here. x plus 2 is 0 in this line. It'll be negative before. It'll be positive afterwards. x minus 4 is 0 in this line. It'll be negative before. It'll be positive, af positive afterwards. And that answers it. So what happens at these asymptotes and also where it crosses the axis? These three negatives multiplying and dividing gives a negative. That gives a positive. That's got a spare negative, and that's positive. So at the asymptote x equals negative 2, it goes down to negative infinity on one side and up to positive infinity on the other. Same with the other one. But you could draw the graph of this function very quickly, just from this. There's a vertical asymptote at negative 2. There's a vertical asymptote at 4 crosses the x-axis, well, it intersects the x-axis at three quarters. You already know there's a horizontal asymptote and this shows the behaviour. What's the value? Before this line, the answer's negative. So, if it's negative and that's an asymptote, it must look like this, if there's an asymptote here. Between them, it's positive. So between there and the zero is positive, so it must come down like this. After it, it goes negative, so it must go down like that. And then after four, it's positive again, so it has to stay positive and stay above that asymptote. And that's a picture of the graph from what's called a table of signs. But it wasn't asked for at all. That was just for a little bit of interest.